Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Cobb County Board of Zoning Appeals. Today is our monthly meeting, and as is our custom at this time, I'd like to ask Officer Kevin Lowry to please come forward. If we'd all please rise, he will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Officer Lowry. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that are here for the first time, let me give you a little insight on how we're going to conduct the meeting today. <clears throat> the first thing that we will concern ourselves with is the consent agenda. These are not only applications that this board has reviewed, but our professional and our engineering staff and our zoning staff have reviewed. To our knowledge, there's no known opposition to these particular cases, so we will move forward with Mr. John Peterson, our zoning administrator, will read these into the record. As he does, the applicant, he or she, will raise their hand to identify themselves. And likewise, if there is anybody here in opposition to any of these particular cases, if they also would raise their hand and identify themselves, and if there is opposition, we will pull that particular case and hear it in its regular numeric order. Uh, once we continue that, once we finish that, then we will go into our consent agenda and it will be the same process. Once that is complete, our officer of the day uh, is Mr. Jason Campbell. Those of you that are going to give testimony before this board, if you would come forward, Mr. Campbell will swear you in. All testimony will be given to the podium to my right. At that time, the applicant will have a 10-minute period to make their presentation to this board, and likewise and collectively, those in opposition will also have a 10-minute period to make their opposition known to this board. With that said, I'm going to ask Mr. Peterson if he has any special comments to make at this time. John? Uh, I do have some comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. There are uh, two cases on today's agenda which have been withdrawn and will not be heard today. First case is, is uh, variance case B37, Charles Carruthers. That case has been withdrawn and will not be heard today. Second case is B39, Isaac Burrow. That case has been withdrawn and will not be heard today. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, it's come to my attention that we need to uh, continue two of the cases that are on today's printed agenda. Uh, variance case B3, total imaging. That case needs to be continued by the staff. Mr. Chairman, they, they need to add one more variance to it to make okay. sure it's properly advertised. So staff is continuing variance case B3, total imaging. Additionally, um, the applicant is here for variance case V40, Global ATM Services, LLC. That case needs to be continued also, Mr. Chairman, and the applicant is here to request that. Okay. And I recognize the applicant. Okay, uh, it's back to this board. We have two cases, V3 and V40, to be continued. Ms. Swanson, you represent V3. Do you want to make a motion on those cases? Um, I, make, I, don't know this is I make a motion that we um, continue both, or continue V3, and the other one as well? Yes. Uh -huh. And V40 to be heard um, at the next hearing on April 1st. Okay, I've got a motion that we continue V3 and also V40. And I have a second. Second, Mr. Uh, Gunther. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye, any opposed? That carries for approval uh, to continue case V3 and V40 until our next scheduled meeting. It's a 5-0 to zero vote. Okay, John, let's go to our next. Okay, uh, I would like to ask the people in today's audience, please turn your cell phones off if you have a cell phone. The ringing does interfere with the broadcasting presentations. So please turn your cell phones off. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'm ready to start the consent agenda. Okay, let's just jump right into it then. Thank you. Cobb County Board of Zoning Appeals, variance hearing consent agenda for March 11th, 2015. Variance case B32, Betty L. Dye, request the variance to waive the rear setback from required 30 feet to 3.6 feet adjacent to the southern property line, waive the side setback for an accessory structure over 144 square feet for a proposed 192 square foot frame shed to require 10 feet to 8 feet adjacent to the eastern property line and to allow an accessory structure to be located closer to the side street right away 
uh, line than the principal building on corner lot in land lots 637 and 696 of the 19th district. The property is located at the southeast corner of Saskatchewan Lane and Bayberry Drive. Staff recommends approval subject to the following conditions. Stormwater management comments and site plan uh, dated December 9th, 2014 for the encroachment shown only. Is the applicant present? That director of the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V32? Let the record show there's no one opposed. <clears throat> variance case V33, Stephen A. Stroud Sr. request a variance to waive the front setback for an accessory structure over 650 square feet for an 800 square foot uh, open and metal awning required 100 feet to 24.8 feet and to allow an accessory structure uh, for the 800 square foot open and metal awning to be located to the front of the principal building in land lot 296 of the 18th district. The property is located on the north side of Stroud Drive, east of Dodgen Road. Staff recommends approval, subject to the site plan received by the zoning division on December 29th, 2014. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to the variance case V33? Let the record show there's no one opposed. <clears throat> Variance case V34, Carlos Macedo requests a variance to waive the side setback for an accessory structure over 144 square feet for a 360 square foot metal carport from the required 10 feet to 4.7 feet and allow an accessory structure uh, for the approximately 360 square foot metal carport to be located to the side of the principal building in land lots 622 and 623 of the 19th district. Property is located on the east side of DeVore Drive, south of Preferti Drive. <coughs> Staff recommends approval of the variance, subject to the site plan received by the zoning division on January 5th, 2015, for the encroachments shown only. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case B34? <coughs> Let the record show there's no one opposed. Variance case B35, Preston and Elizabeth Smith. Smith requests a variance to weigh the rear setback from required 40 feet to 17 feet to weigh the maximum allowable impervious surface from 35 percent <coughs> to 39 percent in land lots 952, 953, and 975 of the 17th district. The property is located on the northeast corner of Cochise Drive and Circle Oaks Drive. Staff, rec uh, staff recommends approval subject to the site plan uh, printed January 2nd, 2015 and the sewer division comments. Is the applicant present? The director of the applicants are here. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V35? <clears throat> Let the record show there's no one opposed. Variance case V36, Robert D. Uh, Luttrell requests a variance to waive the front setback from required 45 feet to 6 feet, waive the side setback from required 10 feet to 0 feet adjacent to the southern property line, and the waive the rear setback uh, from required 40 feet to 10 feet in land lot 756 of the 16th district. The property is located on the east side of Country Squire Lane, north of Bishop Lake Road. Staff recommends approval, subject to the site plan received January 7th, uh, 2015, for the encroachments shown only. Is the applicant present? The director of the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V36? Let the record show there's no one opposed. Variance case V38, Latasha Bond requests the variance to waive the side setbacks require 10 feet to 6 feet adjacent to the northern property line and 8 feet adjacent to the southern property line in land lot 605 of the 17th district. The property is located on the east side of Gaylor Circle, south of Gaylor Drive. Staff recommends approval of the variance subject to the site plan dated June 23, 2014 for the encroachment shown only and stormwater management comments. Is the applicant present? Is the applicant here for V38? Okay, let's do this, uh, Madam Secretary. Let's try to put a call in. This is going to be a short meeting. If they can arrive here before we're finished, then we'll deal with B38 uh, as they arrive. If not, we'll just have to continue with that. Okay. All right, John, let's go to our next one. Uh, was there anyone here opposed to B38? We'll let the record show there's no one opposed. Variance case B42, Michael Ackley, request a variance to allow an accessory structure an existing 890 square foot detached garage be located to the side of the principal building uh, and the way of the side setback for an accessory structure over 650 square feet for the existing 897 square foot detached garage 
to inquire 100 feet to four feet adjacent to the, to the southern property line in landlot 894 of the 19th district. The property is located on the west side of Hiram uh, Lithia, Spr uh, Lithia Springs Road, south of Morris Road. Staff recommends approval of the variance subject to the site plan received January 8, 2015, for the encroachments shown only. Is the applicant present? That director for the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V42? Uh, that director says one person opposed. Okay, on V42, we will pull V42 and hear that in its regular numeric order. Okay. okay. Variance case B43, Ahmed Khatib requests a variance to waive the minimum public road frontage to require 75 feet to zero feet for track two, waive the minimum lot size for a house off a of private easement to require 80,000 square feet to 48,088 square feet, and to waive the width of an easement to require 25 feet to 20 feet in land lots 584 and 585 of the 19th district. The property is located on the east side of Florence Road, north of Moon Road. Staff recommends approval of the variance, subject to the site plan dated December 23, 2014. Stormwater management comments and fire department comments. Is the applicant present? That director show the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V43? That director show there's no one opposed. <clears throat> V44, a sure thing one, LLC. Request a variance to waive the rear setbacks required 40 feet to 20 feet in land lot 453 of the 19th district. The property is located on the southwest corner of Macklin Road and Bullard Road. Staff recommends approval subject to the following conditions. Site plan uh, dated December 15th, 2014. Is the applicant present? That director show the applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V44? <clears throat> that director show there's no one opposed. Variance case V45, Abdu, Rahman, Aikul, Tahar, request a variance to waive the rear setback to require 20 feet to 8 feet from a, uh, a minor side property line uh, for, uh, in referencing previous variance case V99 of October 1st, 2014, approved to 9.5 feet from the major side property line. Uh, in then lot 868 of the 17th district, the property is located uh, on the northeast corner of Black Bear Drive and Hawk Drive. Staff recommends approval of the variance subject to the site plan received January 9th, 2015, and all previous variance conditions or comments not in conflict. The applicant's representative is present. Is there anyone here opposed to variance case V45? Let the record show there's no one opposed, and that completes the consent agenda. Okay, it's back to this board with the exception of V38 that has not arrived. Uh, and we're going to pull V42. We'll hear that as it comes up in its order. Is there any other comments uh, from board members? Pardon? Uh, let's see. Uh, V30. Uh, Leticia, Leticia, Leticia Bond, is that you, ma'am? Raise your hand. Good girl, sit down. Okay, that's back on the consent agenda, John. Are we okay with that? Yes, that's fine. <clears throat> All right, with the exception of just V42 that we will hear in its order, is there any comments from our board members? Not hearing any, I'll entertain a motion for approval. Make a motion we approve the consent agenda with the exception of V42 as presented. Okay, I've got a motion. I have a second. Uh, Ms. Gunther, any other comments? Not hearing any, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye, any opposed? That carries for approval, Madam Secretary, five to zero. Now, those of you that are on the consent agenda, your business is complete with us for today. You're welcome to stay uh, or you're welcome to leave. If you leave, we'd ask you to leave quietly how we could continue on with our business. So at this time, you're free to go. <clears throat> we'll give them a couple of seconds, John. And I guess the first case that we're going to concern ourselves with is V40. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, 41. There we go. Okay. Variance case V41, Lee Courtney requests a variance to waive the rear setback from required 30 feet to 20 feet, to waive the maximum allowable impervious surface from 35% to 42.8%, and landlot 94 of the 1st District. 
The property is located on the north side of Bellingham Drive, west of Roswell Road. Is the applicant present? That directs so the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed? The grand case is V41. That directs so there's no one opposed. Would the applicant please come forward to be sworn in? All right, for the purpose of the record, give me your name, please, first. Lee Courtney. Okay, and this gentleman's name? Doug Presley. Okay, now go ahead and tell us what you like. We have a deck uh, yeah. out the back of our house, and we would like to screen it in, which would mean putting a roof on it, and then extending it out just a little bit uh, that is not going to be screened in for a barbecue pit. All right, give us a little more information. Uh, you know, is it a wood deck? Is it a concrete deck? Is it what kind of roof? A little more information. Um, it's a wood deck. It has no roof right now. It's just a deck. So uh, we'd like to screen it in. We're next to a retaining pond, which means we get extra bugs. And so um, it is going to, oh wait, I'm sorry. Um, so we'd like to um, have a waiver of the rear setback from the required 30 feet to 20 feet. And then we would also like to have waived the maximum impervious surface from the required 35% to 42.8%. And it's because the roof, um, well, the deck is already there, and so the roof wouldn't make that much of a difference um, as far as the uh, impervious requirements. Um, but then we are asking to extend the deck out just a little bit without it being screened in, and then that would affect. How much more square footage on the deck? Do you know those details? Um, let's see. It's probably uh, between 150 and 200 square feet. Okay. Anything else you'd like to tell us? Do you have a survey or any, any pictorials or anything you want to show us? Right. If it's not in your package, we both have Do one. Have Can this? you put it on the overhead? And, and we, we also have that... Uh, in our books. Those are the only visuals that we have are the, uh, I might add one thing and that is the uh, deck is already extending into the rear setback. That was done when the house was built. So the existing deck already uh, penetrates the 30 foot rear setback line. The okay. only thing that brings this to your attention is, is that we're putting a roof over it, which obviously now makes it part of the construction. Anything else you want to tell us? Um, extremely tough topology in this neighborhood. Um, several of the homes in this neighborhood have had previous uh, applications granted for um, incursions into the setback and for impervious. The lots are very, very difficult. Big homes on small lots. Yeah. Um, so just a tough. And just to clear the record, are you the builder or the contractor? I'm a contractor. That? Okay. All right, anything else? Not that I can think of. Okay, at this time, is there anybody here in opposition like to speak in opposition to B41? Hearing and not seeing anybody, it's back to this board for discussion. Ms. Kim Swanson represents this district, so I'm gonna ask her to lead us in the discussion. Ms. Swanson. Hi, Ms. Courtney, how are you? Hi. Um, the concerns that, that we have, and, and I went back and looked at the other variances in the neighborhood um, is not so much as as what you're going into your setback because that pretty much is in in some ways it's existing so you're just kind of extending that that line um, but the concerns that that I have um, is that you are going into um, the impervious up to 42.8 and it's starting at 35 percent so then um, I had uh, Mr. Peterson go back and he looked into um, the other variances that were submitted and approved for that area on some other, uh, some of your neighbors. And the next door neighbor to the left um, had a variance to up to 52% impervious, but they put in, um, they installed a, 
infiltration ditch to reduce the site runoff. So in effect, it brought them down to, even though they're covered at the 52%, it still brought them down to the reduction of that of 35%. So that was approved because that's sort of what we're looking for is where this runoff is, gonna, is going to go. So it's not impacting other homes or your neighbors down below. Um, there was also another variance that was approved two doors down um, for 39% impervious, and they put in a rain garden and a bioretention area, um, and that was, and I think they did something with their driveway with some pervious pavers. And so with that reduction, um, even if it was at 39%, it was still was able to reduce it, and, and again, the runoff um, is minimal. So in this, in this case, um, talking with stormwater again, we have the concerns, um, particularly with with um, your property, is that there's some issues that the runoff isn't going into the stormwater management system, and so we were looking at the possibility of you providing some sort of infiltration system that would kind of mitigate the the what you're requesting this this overage of of um, the forty. 2.8%. So what I wanted to do, so you'll kind of understand what it is, and you have the builder and he's shaking his head, I'm, I'm sure, sure he knows. But what I'd like to do is have you step down and then have Mr. Braden come up to the podium. He's with Stormwater, and he can talk a little bit to us um, as a board as to what solutions that, that he has in mind that could assist with um, you bringing down that impact of impervious, and then I can bring you up to see if that was okay to add as a stipulation. Okay. And if I can make one comment uh, before Dave comes up. We did put a small rain garden already, uh, uh, maybe 60 days ago, into the left rear corner of the yard. It's in an area where a lot of the runoff naturally goes today, and that has already been added. It may not suffice in, in, in the place of a flow well, or some other retention system, but just to give you a flavor, we have in fact done that in the last 60 days. And how large of an area? It's a, it's probably about a 60 square foot area, and it's dug out about three foot deep uh, with gravel and sand and water, water absorbing plants in it. Okay, thanks. And um, Mr. Braden can can talk to that okay. as well. Thank you. Just stick around. Dave Braden with the Stormwater Management Division. Um, first of all, let me clarify: Did we were we looking at getting them down to forty percent, which is what we talked about at in the in the work session? Yes, okay. 30, 40 percent, or if it was lower. For, to I did couch for that, so you what? I, I did calculations for that. I just want to make sure that was a number we were shooting for. Yes, that, that would okay. be fine. Um, uh, as you as you already mentioned, you can see the detention pond is located to the right of the property there, and. <clears throat> almost at least the rear of this house and anything that's put in the rear of this house actually bypasses that pond. So that's why we're really concerned about going over that limit is because it doesn't get into the pond, has no chance for mitigation. So, um, uh, and I was looking at not knowing that they have done anything on the site because I hadn't, hadn't uh, been notified of that. But, um, and I think my site visit was actually prior to 60 days ago. So, um, but um, if they were just to do a dry well to mitigate the increase or the proposed impervious from 64, 38 square feet down to 40% um, uh, would be 6,004 square feet. We're looking at a dry well. If you did the whole thing filled with stone, about five by five by four and a half. It's about uh, um, 40, 45 cubic feet. Um, that could actually be, the stone could be reduced if you put a, a dry well unit in there because then you get 100% credit for that. Um, my guess is that it, there may be enough storage in that um, uh, rain garden area to meet that volume requirement, but I'd have to go out in the field to look at it. So if we could just maybe stipulate that they provide at least 45 cubic feet of storage, um, infiltration storage, then that would, that would suffice to get us to 40%. 40%. So. That would go to 40%. Okay. Is that good? All right, thank you. Okay. Does, does anybody else on the yeah. board have any Before questions? Before David leaves, any other questions for Mr. Uh, Braden? Okay, David, thank okay. you. Okay. You can. 
All right, for the applicants, come back up now, please. All right, Kim, go go right ahead. Hi. So since you um, have put in that little garden and it hasn't been calculated into the impervious, would, number one, would you, would you be willing to install a dry well system with the 45 cubic feet for the storage? And it could be offset with what you've already put in um, with your little garden, but would you agree to having that as a stipulation that you would work with stormwater um, and discuss what you currently just put in and if it's going to suffice or if you're going to have to add um, what he was saying is an additional dry well so that you have the storage that would go up to 45 cubic feet. So if you agree with that stipulation, then I could add that into um, my motion and then um, you can go back to working with Mr. Braden to make those adjustments and calculations and then he will be the final say of, of yes, you can go and, and put your roof over your um, deck and then add a, an additional deck. Does that yes, absolutely. work for you? Can yes. I ask a question? Yes, Just you may. A process uh -huh. question. You can ask. We still have to get this permitted, obviously. We didn't Correct. permit it before we get the variance. So would I would we run that by Dave would we run that by you during the permit process yes okay you would go to to Mr. Braden you can call him um and and he can work on those numbers you can provide him with what you have just put in to your 60 days ago into <coughs> your backyard so you can work with him and then he can tell you what you will need to do in order to go in and get it permitted and that's not to exceed 40 percent and it's not to exceed 40%. So so there's a little thing we have here in Cobb County that you won't even be able to put a um, birdhouse in your front yard, backyard, or side yards. <laughs> really? It's <laughs> a little joke. Okay. So you are at your maximum. You're at the maximum. <laughs> so you cannot okay. do anything else. Okay. Okay? All right. So I am ready to make my motion. If anybody has any questions. Any um, other questions comments, questions from board members? Sounds like we got a good solution. Let's get, let's get, a, let's move. So I'd like to make um, the motion that we approve V41 with the additional stipulation that they will, well, actually, I will get rid of um, number two, waive the maximum impervious surface from the required 35% to 40%, so that will be changed, and that um, they will be required to um, capture 45 cubic feet of water um, and meet with Mr. Braden to discuss um, what sort of system they will need to put in um, that would also take into account that they have put in already a water garden feature that might um, help offset that 45 cubic feet. So that's my motion. Good. I've got a motion. Do I have a second? Second, second Ms. Trombetti. Any other comments? Not hearing any. I'll call for the vote. All in favor signify by saying aye, aye. Any opposed? Carries for approval five to zero. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, John, let's go to our next one. Yes, sir. 42. Variance case V42, Michael Ackley, request a variance to allow an accessory structure, existing 890 square, uh, 897 square foot detached garage to be located to the side of the principal building and to waive the side setback <laughs> for an accessory structure over 650 square feet for an existing 897 square foot detached garage required 100 feet to 4 feet adjacent to the southern property line and land lot 894 the 19th district. The property is located on the west side of Hiram Lithia Springs Road south of Morris Road. The applicant is present. There was one person here opposed earlier. All those wishing, uh, all those wishing to address the board please come forward to be sworn in. All right, Michael, sir. Give us your name. Michael Ackley with uh, United Contractors Building for uh, Camelot Properties. Okay. Tell us what you're doing, Michael. Um, Camelot Properties obtained this lot off of um, 
Lithia Hiram Springs Road, Hiram Lithia Springs Road. And uh, originally it was a lot that had a house on it and a detached garage. Uh, the two structures were, were built back in 1914. In 2013, they demolished the house. They kept the two-door garage or the shed. And uh, the owner, I guess, sat on the property. We were looking for a property to build in that area. And we contacted the owner, and we struck a deal, and we purchased the property, pending that we are going to be leaving the uh, garage uh, in its place. None of the documentations that we had showed this detached garage extending or encroaching over the building line until we went and got my surveyor and he went and created a full-blown site plan showing everything showing the house we're going to be build, building on it the house uh, sir is going to be a three-bedroom slab house not a lot of storage so we considered keeping the garage as an extra storage or he can park his car in there for the future owner um, when we went for the permitting, I noticed that the garage was extending and encroaching. However, I, fi we, I figured that this can be grandfathered in because it was built back in 1914. Um, when we went for the permitting, um, the gentleman at the zoning department uh, made it clear that it is encroaching and I'm going to have to get either a variance or we knock the garage down. So I discussed it with the... Um, with Camilla Properties, and uh, they said, let's try the variance. We still would like to keep the garage because it's going to look, it's going to be an incentive for the buyer as an extra detached garage, or, you know, we will be, right now it looks pretty rough, built back in 1914. The plan is it's going to be painted, repaired, and whatever that needs to be taken care of. So your of. plan is to fix up the garage? I'm sorry? Your plan is to fix up this garage? Oh, definitely, sir. Okay. All right, what else do you want to tell us? Um, not much, just we're hoping that we can get the um, approval for it to keep it. A little more information. When do you start, when do you want to start building the house? And hey, as, as, soon as, as soon as this actually, we purchased a lot back last year, I believe it was July or August. And um, they, uh, we've been actually trying to get moving on it. We had the, we had our uh, uh, septic tank soil testing and all of that taken care of, and we just it took us a little bit of, a, of time to get where we at right now until we went back in January to get the permit, the building permit, and unfortunately, uh, this situation popped up. But just to answer your question as soon as possible. A little more information. How big is the house going to be? Yes, sir. The house is a three-bedroom uh, ranch on a slab. It's going to be approximately 800, 1,800 square foot house, three-bedroom, two-bath, two-door, uh, two-car garage. Okay, sir, anything else you want to tell us? No, sir. All right, if you would, just have a seat, and at this yes, time sir. we'll hear from the opposition. Hey, my name's Mike Edson. Mike Edson, okay. And, uh, I live right across the street there. That piece of land has been in our family for over 150 years up to this not too long ago. Uh, the uh, garage you're showing is already like, you know, only four feet from a private drive. Okay, on the other side of the property, down by, by the horse pasture, that is my sister's property. Um, and we saw some uh, blueprints where they're proposed going to build and actually had a house setting turned sideways where it was actually looking at horse, horse pasture other than facing the road. The old building, it really needs to be torn down because there was a lot of ugly stuff went in that thing for several years. It was a meth lab and it took it forever to get. Well, Cobb County has been up there numerous times. Uh, this property has already got, uh, it's got two wells on it that I'm sure y'all are not aware about. Um, it's going to have to be filled in, and the existing septic tank on that actually perks out to my sister's property. So that's going to have to be cleaned up as well. Um, 
And then of course there's a, you know, I'm I'm just I just need so, something that's. I don't mind anybody building over there. The lot's just not very big. And it's going everybody's gonna look at a place on it. Uh, I mean that building is an eyesore to me and has been for many years. And I know there's a set. Uh, they were wanting to get the uh, house closer to the road than everybody else was going to be. I'm not really sure how far it's supposed to be built off the road. I'm thinking it's around 100 foot out in that area, 75 to 100 foot, something like that. You know, so we're just worried about what it's going to look like. It's going, I mean, matter, the house that we saw on some blueprints, and I was unable to get them to bring with me today, it looked like a two-story house turning, like you'd be looking more at the side of the house or the back of the house if you're looking at the front of the house from the road. You know. At the acreage, I don't think the acreage is right either. So I just think there needs to be more work done over there before anybody goes building the house. Okay. Mike, anything else you want to tell us? No, I mean, just keep everybody happy, but I'd like to have it done right. Okay. Uh, I am familiar with the property. Um, I am familiar with the sister's property. Now, there's a couple of things. First of all, the health department controls the septic tank. The county has nothing to do with that. Okay. <clears throat> so if the health department says that the septic tank can go in, that's entirely something that we can't control at all. Just want to make, make sure we're aware of that. Have you and the builder had an opportunity to talk at all before today? No, sir. Okay. Um, I do see that shed is on sightly. There's no question about that. It, it and as, as he's indicated, it was built in 1914. I, I'm uh, sure that's. They had cinder blocks in the 14. I yeah, I, I understand. But uh, yeah, this, if he owns the property, he's going to have a right to build on that property. Uh, exactly. So and it's and it's not a small piece. It's you know 0.88 acres. So it's a it's a reasonably sized piece of property. I do think that a little dialogue between the two of you and the neighbors would probably go a long way in settling, uh, settle, settling this uh, situation. If he's going to build an 1,800 square foot home, that's a reasonably built home. Have you seen the uh, site plan or the, the survey on this at all? Have, have yes, I had one, and I actually I give it to Terry, my sister, and she was going to break some copies of it, but she's got a new grand. Yeah. So, now, so I, I don't know what's happening to her. You know, I, 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 probably I, changing a diaper right about now. <laughs> I, you know, I got one or two things. I, I we, we, he doesn't have a real hardship to leave the existing shed there. You don't have a real hardship to stop him from building. No. Nope. I would like to see. Uh, I'd like to see some kind of compromise. And what I'd like to know if you two could get together, and discuss this and have a meeting. And then come back before this board next month and make a decision. It make uh, I think it'd make everybody a lot happier. That's Paul. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I've been looking at that place fifty-seven now, years now. So now, you Michael, know. you and your builders want to be good neighbors out there. And uh, would you be acceptable to delaying this for thirty days to give you an opportunity to get together with not only him but his his sister and any other neighbors? I mean, this is an old neighborhood out there, and it's still somewhat rural. Would you be willing to to uh, to give them a little opportunity to I'll do that? Okay, I, I really think that some dialogue between you and this gentleman and his sister, and uh, of course you got a school there and you got a church there and you got a cemetery there, so I think a little dialogue go a long way. But let me also point out to you, Mr. Edson, he does have a right to build. Oh yeah. And that and that permit, as far as the health department is concerned, we have nothing to do with, and that's 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 the other issue. Well, I, you know, I've just been trying to get in touch. I I tried to buy the property. Okay, now here's the deal. That is an old shed. I do think, if anything, and if we we approve this, if you were on the consent agenda, but I was going to bring up to the point, uh, even on the consent agenda, that, that the condition of that building needs to be re-looked at and to be fixed up and cleaned up and I think all of us have been out there to see it we do have a concern about that yeah so you've got a got an opportunity in in, in, a, in, a, in a couple of, uh, in a month to go ahead and get this thing decided yeah, that, so we're gonna put me, this off I just want it I just want it to look like it's supposed to be there instead of a good. birdhouse in the side and he it. wants to be a good neighbor okay I'm sure he does thank you I want to make a motion that we hold this case for 30 days till our next scheduled meeting 
which is April the 1st. Is that correct, John? We've gone to the first Wednesday of the month this year, this month, I guess it's Easter. Spring break. Okay, spring break. That's right. So it's only three weeks away. April 1st is when we'll see you back here, okay? That'll work. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any other comments? Just discussion. Discussion. I'm glad that they're willing to meet and, and talk about this, but really the only question that we have for us has to do with the garage. I mean, that's really all we're deciding on. So where the house is placed and how big the house is and what it looks like and all those kinds of things are not really Well, isn't this a zoning board us. as well? It, this is the variance. It's a, the request is for a variance for where the garage is to be placed on the pro or is placed on the property. Right. So I'm just, I think we want everybody to be happy, but I want to make sure we know or that you understand the setbacks for the house and all those things are not in question, okay? It's, it's the garage that we're voting on. So, I'm sorry, I just wanted to make that clear because yeah. I thought there was a misunderstanding yeah. about what. That, that, that's all we can be. decide, not the zoning or anything else. Well, who, who, do I, who do I find out about the zoning from? Well, I, well, the zoning's already taken place. The property's already zoned. But if you have any zoning questions after the meeting, you can see Mr. Peterson or Mr. Campbell right there. Okay. Any other comments from board members? Not hearing any. I've got a motion. Do I have a second? I do have a second. I got a second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. That carries for approval. We're going to hold that case for 30 days till our next scheduled meeting. And these two gentlemen are going to get together and talk. Mr. Peterson, anything else come before this board? Uh, that is it, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we've got some house cleaning to do, housekeeping to do. I've got uh, minutes from March the 9th and also the February the 22nd meetings uh, to approve. I have a motion on both of those. I have a motion to approve every day. Okay. I'll second. second, Mr. Gunther. Uh, comments? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. That carries for approval, five to zero, Madam Secretary. Anything else? Not hearing any? Ladies and gentlemen, our business is complete today. Thank you for uh, watching our monthly show.